should only be doing low impact exercises such as walking, aerobics, swimming, and yoga during the first trimester. I don't agree with that advice at all. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back. I am actually really excited to talk about the madness that is about to be within this video today. If you happen to be new here, my name is Dr. Nicole. I'm a pelvic floor specialist and my base training, my doctorate degree is actually in physical therapy or physiotherapy if you happen to be from over in Europe. That means I love all things exercise and I love all things women's health, pelvic floor, pregnancy, postpartum. And so when those two worlds come together and we can talk about exercise during pregnancy, that's like my dream come true. <laughs> so we're not gonna waste any more time. We're just gonna dive into some of the lies that are being said to you on the internet or wherever else they're posting these things about exercise during the first trimester. Let's talk about some of the ridiculous quotes on WebMD. So the, there was a blogger talking about running during the first trimester, and she said it should be avoided because of something that she found on WebMD. WebMD said it, as in running, may lead to more aches and pains, may make you go off balance, increasing your risk of injury. How many of you out there have ran and fell while running. Now, granted, there are definitely some times when I've hit gravel, I've been on like some steep terrain or slippery terrain on the ice or something running when I probably shouldn't have been running, didn't have the right type of running shoes, and I've had a fall occur. I've never had any major injuries, bones breaking, significant bruising, I've maybe had a few scrapes, but that was really it. So to say that you shouldn't run during the first trimester because you could get a major injury from falling is kind of crazy. Now, I guess maybe they could be talking to someone who's never ran before and they're thinking about going out and starting running, but I still feel like if this person were on some pretty predictable terrain and they're not like sprinting, I don't see any reason why you would need to be worried about running during pregnancy, especially during the first trimester. My baby right now at nine weeks pregnant is the size of a green grape stored within my uterus, within my abdomen, within muscles, fascia, fat. And I just don't think there's a fall that I could do right now that would cause injury to my baby. Unless I like hit my head and had a major injury, then I guess we would have some problems. But I just don't think it's that risky to say that people shouldn't run during the first trimester, especially if you have a history of running. That is just complete ridiculousness. Let's talk about one of the experts quoted on CNN Health. This was all in response to seeing a picture on social media of someone doing some Olympic lifts during pregnancy. And what that expert said was that lifting big weights, anything in excess of 15 pounds, according to this expert, could put both mom and baby at risk. Now, first of all, an excess amount of weights, big weights, heavy weights, that is different from person to person. For me, at 110 pounds, when I wasn't lifting, maybe 15 pounds would be a lot if it was like 15 pound dumbbells on each side and I was doing overhead lifting or something. But if I have been doing CrossFit at my gym and I'm used to deadlifting 200 pounds, then lifting 15 pound weights is not going to be considered a big amount of weight. Now, I think why there is such a controversy about lifting weights during pregnancy is because it has been found that holding your breath or bearing down could slow blood flow to your baby, which obviously is not good. We want baby to have lots of blood flow. But if you've been coached and have been practicing lifting, making sure you're not breath holding, making sure you're not doing a Valsalva maneuver or bearing down, and you've been really listening to your body and how it's responding to exercise, you haven't been noticing that you're peeing your pants, no organs are bulging out of your body or anything like that, I don't see any reason why you couldn't lift during pregnancy, especially during the first trimester when it's not even like you're really working around a bump or anything. Usually most of us have a very small bump at that point. And so there are really not many lifts that aren't gonna be safe for us to do. And then there are the YouTube experts or influencers that are giving us exercise advice about what to do during pregnancy. This particular influencer gave this quote on her channel. I stopped doing ab exercises after my first trimester because you actually should not train your abs throughout the rest of your pregnancy to prevent ab separation. I can agree to some extent because it's true you don't want to be doing sit-ups and Russian twists and really high level ab exercises during pregnancy because most likely you are increasing your abdominal separation. 
but there are so many ab exercises that can safely be done throughout pregnancy and should be done. Otherwise, you are taking the risk of that ab separation actually being worse because you're just completely neglecting your abs. And for that matter, with all exercises that you're doing, you should be engaging your abs to some extent. So even if it's not a straight ab workout, it's still ab and core strengthening that you're doing. So please don't listen to the advice that says, don't do anything with your abs all of pregnancy or you'll get ab separation because that just simply is not true. If you're loving this video so far and you want to help my channel grow, hitting that like button would be the perfect thing to do right now. The Better Me blog made a bold claim saying that you should not be laying on your back for exercise during your first trimester. And if it can't be avoided and you have to do it, then make sure you get up slowly because you could experience dizziness. There is nothing else, no research, nothing out there that supports this claim at all. There are plenty of places where you'll find that you shouldn't be laying on your back a lot during second and third trimester, but the first trimester, there's just no reason to avoid it. The whole thing is that the weight of baby is putting pressure on your vena cava, which is affecting blood flow to you and your baby. It can cause lightheadedness, dizziness, and this is something you wanna avoid. But during the first trimester, I'm pretty sure you could lay on your back and not have any of those symptoms. Maybe they were referring to dizziness that could happen with position changes because of your blood pressure being low during your first trimester. But again, that would only apply to someone with low blood pressure. And for that matter, that would mean they can't lay in bed because when they go to sit up, then they're gonna experience dizziness. So that just all around doesn't really make sense. It's a blanket statement that I'm hoping they meant more for second and third trimester. But when it comes to the first trimester, you can lay on your back, it's totally fine. Medical News Today wanted to tell us that we should only be doing low impact exercises such as walking, aerobics, swimming, and yoga during the first trimester. I don't agree with that advice at all. <laughs> I think what they were getting at here is that we do have changes happening in our body. We have a hormone being released called relaxin, which is making our ligaments stretch and move a little bit more than normal. And this is for good reason, because when it's time to deliver our baby, we do need our pelvis to stretch and grow and be able to be born. And when we have a lot of relaxin, it can make us a little bit loosey goosey, which could in theory make us more prone to injury. So we would want to protect our joints during exercise. However, to say we can only do low impact exercise, I feel like is way more restrictive than it needs to be. I did a search on the internet for injuries that happen due to high impact exercises during the first trimester, and I couldn't find any evidence. <laughs> I couldn't find any stories, any case studies, or anything like that. Now, I definitely know that things like high impact aerobics, running, um, jump roping, some of those things might get harder as we get bigger and there is extra pressure on our pelvic floor, on all our ligaments and joints and those activities might not be a good idea for some people. But again, there can't be a blanket statement that says this is bad for everyone. And the reason we can't say that is because we have no idea what this person was doing before pregnancy. We have no idea how their body is responding to exercise during pregnancy. There are plenty of people that have ran all the way up until pretty much the day of delivery. And there are plenty of people that have been runners in second trimester already. They were like, this is really painful. Or they were peeing their pants or they noticed signs of prolapse and they were like, I need to stop running. And that's why it's really important to work directly with someone if you have questions, which most of us do have questions, work with someone directly that's an expert that's gonna hear your story and tailor your workouts to you. If you ever need help with something like this, I would be glad to help you out and create a program just custom to you. I'll put a link below if that's something that interests you. Bottom line, be careful what you read and consume on the internet about exercise because for almost everyone, some form of exercise is going to be recommended. If you happen to be high risk, you have other medical complications and your doctor has said, exercise isn't good for you because of X, Y, and Z, then you should definitely listen to their advice and you shouldn't take my blanket advice for you. You wanna get specific advice for you and your specific situation. It honestly breaks my heart to think there are people that are scared to exercise, are worried about continuing to exercise or have wanted to start exercising but feel like now isn't a good time, it's probably not safe now that I'm pregnant because the truth is not exercising during your pregnancy actually has a lot of risks as well. There are a lot more issues for baby, there are higher C-section rates, there are just a lot 
lot of reasons why it's a good idea to exercise very regularly during pregnancy, even if you've never exercised before. And there is evidence to prove that. I'll put some of that down in the description below as well. What questions do you have about exercise? What things have you heard? You're like, I don't know if that's true or not. Throw them down in the comments. I would be happy to answer those. I want to make sure everyone feels safe and comfortable exercising during their pregnancy because there are just so many benefits of doing it. While we're on the topic of do's and don'ts of pregnancy, this video over here is all about the top do's and don'ts that I will actually be following during my current pregnancy. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. I will see you all in the next video.